Imagine a charismatic surgeon standing in a state-of-the-art operating room, gloved hands poised over groundbreaking medical technology that could change lives forever. That's Paolo Macchiarini, a man once hailed as a medical pioneer. With the kind of charisma that would make George Clooney's ER character jealous, he had it all. Prestigious positions, international fame, and the kind of innovation that had everyone from journalists to other surgeons looking his way. But what if I told you that behind the allure of groundbreaking science was a dark tale of unethical experiments and falsified data? What if this man, who promised to revolutionize medicine as we know it, was actually risking lives, leaving a trail of victims and crushed hopes in his wake? In the not-so-distant past, if you had a damaged trachea, also known as the windpipe, your options were grim, limited treatments, invasive surgeries, or even worse, the clock ticking on your life. Paolo Macchiarini's miracle cure was a synthetic trachea, a lab-grown windpipe that could replace your damaged one. Picture a scaffold made from biodegradable plastic, like a blank canvas. Onto this scaffold, a patient's own stem cells would be carefully planted. You heard that right, your cells, your cure. These cells would then grow and multiply, turning that inert plastic into a living, breathing windpipe. But what exactly made this technology so evolutionary? Traditional tracheal transplants required a donor, and waiting for a suitable match could take years, a luxury not available to many critical patients. Machiarini's synthetic tracheas promised to bypass the weight. The media couldn't get enough of it. The future of medicine blared headlines. Machiarini himself was likened to a modern-day Leonardo da Vinci, a Renaissance man in the realm of regenerative medicine. Prestigious hospitals and international conferences jockeyed to get him on their stages, touting his marvel as the dawn of a new medical era. Riding the wave of his medical miracle, Paolo Machiarini became more than just a surgeon. He morphed into a celebrity. Time Magazine included him in their list of the top 50 most influential people in the world, cementing his status as a scientific rock star. Television programs couldn't get enough of him. Interviews, documentaries, even a highly publicized feature with Oprah Winfrey catapulted him into a realm usually reserved for Hollywood A-listers. But it wasn't just mainstream media that was captivated. Universities clamored to offer him positions, and research grants were almost thrown at him. In the scientific world, where recognition often comes slowly and quietly, Machiarini's rise was nothing short of spectacular. His research was published in prestigious medical journals, and he was awarded prime speaking slots at major conferences. People listened when he talked, and why wouldn't they? After all, he was the man who promised to revolutionize organ transplantation. But science, like all things, isn't infallible. It's a process of trial and error, and in medical science, errors can be fatal. That's why rigorous testing and validation are crucial. Yet Machiarini didn't just bend the rules, he snapped them. Instead of years of clinical trials, he plunged headlong into surgeries. And that's precisely where our story takes a dark turn. When a charismatic surgeon promises a groundbreaking treatment that could save your life, what would you do? For several desperate patients, the answer was simple. Trust him. The journey of these trusting souls begins with Endomerium Bayen, a 36-year-old geology PhD student from Eritrea who was grappling with advanced tracheal cancer. Introduced to Machiarini, he became one of the first to receive a synthetic trachea coated in his own stem cells in 2011. Initially celebrated as a triumph, Bayen's health deteriorated, leading to his untimely death in 2013. But as it would turn out, this was not an isolated case. Enter Yasim Satir, a 24-year-old Turkish woman whose already damaged trachea needed further attention after a series of unsuccessful surgeries. Desperate and running out of options, her family saw Machiarini as their last hope. Yasim would undergo a staggering five surgeries, each plunging her into a deeper medical abyss that included multiple infections and internal bleeding. She lost her fight for life in 2017. Unfortunately, her ordeal echoes that of Christopher Lyles, a 30-year-old American who was lured by Machiarini's promise to cure his rare form of tracheal cancer. Flying across the Atlantic, Lyles received his synthetic trachea in Sweden. 
However, the dream was short-lived. Lyles would pass away just three months post-operation, a tragic end strikingly similar to the paths walked by Bayan and Satir. Ethical questions couldn't be ignored any longer. Had Macchiarini rushed these surgeries without adequate testing? Was he ignoring protocol in the name of fame and revolutionary medical advancements? Soon, medical journals started receiving letters, some anonymous, urging a second look at Macchiarini's groundbreaking work. These early signs of trouble were just the tip of an iceberg, one that would soon reveal its deadly mass. The whispers began, first in hushed tones among colleagues, then a little louder in medical conferences. Doctors and researchers started questioning the miracle of synthetic tracheas. Why were so many patients experiencing severe complications? Were these just growing pains of a new medical procedure, or were they red flags indicating something fundamentally flawed? Blowing the whistle in the world of scientific research isn't like shouting fire in a crowded room. It's often more like whispering into a void. Imagine the dilemma these whistleblowers faced. Speak out and risk your career, or stay silent and possibly let misconduct go unchallenged. Four of Machiarini's colleagues at the Karolinska Institute, where he was once a luminary, chose the former. They reported inconsistencies in his research and expressed serious concerns over the welfare of the patients he had operated on. Yet their early warnings were met with chilling indifference from the higher-ups. They were sidelined, their concerns talked up to professional jealousy or mere misunderstandings. These weren't just career risks, these were life-altering choices, decisions that put them on a collision course with an institution that was, at the time, more invested in protecting its star than in questioning him. But what these whistleblowers lacked in institutional support, they made up for in tenacity. Their evidence? Detailed records, hidden data, and a plethora of unresolved patient complications. In science, data is king. But in Machiarini's case, the data was starting to look, well, shaky. Studies and papers authored by him were suddenly coming under intense scrutiny. Questions were raised, doubts were forming and the shiny armor of this once revered surgeon began to show its first signs of tarnish. Just as every rise has its peak, so too does it have its precipice. For Mikey Arini, the tipping point came when an investigative documentary aired on Swedish television. Titled Experimenten, this expose delved into the experiences of Mikey Arini's patients, interviewing families, reviewing medical records, and assembling a damning collage of malpractice and deceit. The documentary was a turning point. It was as if someone had flipped a switch. Public opinion shifted dramatically. Those previously skeptical voices were now joined by a chorus of outrage, demanding accountability. Authorities could no longer brush aside the growing mountain of evidence or the voices of the whistleblowers. Suddenly, the Karolinska Institute, which had long been Machiarini's fortress, launched an internal investigation. They found him guilty of scientific misconduct a term that hardly captures the human cost of his actions. Medical journals retracted his papers, and institutions distanced themselves, making Machiarini a pariah in the community he once ruled. It was not just the fall of a once prominent surgeon, it was the crumbling of an entire mythos. The unraveling exposed not just one man's recklessness, but a system that allowed it to happen. A system that prioritized dazzling innovations over ethical scrutiny. Mikey Arini's unraveling wasn't just an isolated incident of a scientist gone rogue. It spotlighted gaping holes in the ethical fabric of scientific research. Here's the stinging truth. Science is propelled by pushing boundaries. But at what cost? And who pays the price when ambition overshadows ethics? Let's be clear. Scientific misconduct isn't a victimless crime. Behind every falsified data point or manipulated result is a human life that could be at risk. In Machiarini's case, the real casualties were the patients, people who had trusted them with their lives, only to be used as stepping stones in his relentless climb to the top. This story serves as a stark reminder that ethical vigilance is not optional, it's imperative. It questions the roles played by research institutions, peer-reviewed journals, and even us, the public, who often unquestioningly celebrate scientific advances. It begs us to ask, how can we balance the thirst for innovation with the solemn duty to do no harm? In the wake of Machiarini's fall from grace, 
an eerie silence settled over the scientific community. Those hallowed institutions that once welcomed him with open arms are now grappling with their own accountability. The Karolinska Institute underwent leadership changes and promised reforms, while medical journals began tightening their peer review processes. Some would say it's too little too late, but others see it as a step in the right direction. While science relies on bold steps and grand visions, the line between innovation and recklessness can blur, sometimes with devastating consequences.